I'm here with actor Alejandro Hernandez, who is currently recurring on NBC's new hit, New Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Before we start talking about that, though, why don't we go back and talk about when you first decided you wanted to be an actor, what you, you know, sure. when you started to realize that was your destiny. Um, yeah, I mean, hmm. I always had, like, a, I always knew that I liked performing and acting, but I don't think I, like, I never thought growing up it was, like, a feasible career. Mm -hmm. I, was, I assumed I was going to be, like, you know, a teacher or something like that, you know, something that was stable. Survival job. Survival, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think, I think I realized it when I was in college. Um, you know, I, I went to high school and I wasn't, like, the best, you know, student in high school. Mm -hmm. I kind of, like, was finding my way, and then I went to community college for two years. It was okay. And I transferred to Montclair State University, uh, which where I, is where I kind of started mm -hmm. my acting journey. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, to make a long story short, I bumped into an acting class uh, on my way to back to my dorm room and the head of the, the, the BFA acting program at Montclair State at the time, her name is Dr. Suzanne Trout, saw me and then she asked me questions after the class, it was, I be, would I be interested in doing something like this? And I was like, man, maybe, whatever. And then she was like, you know, I'll give it a week over. I'll give you a play to read. Mm -hmm. And the play that she gave me to read was Jesus Happy A Train by Stephen Edgirgis. And I read that play and I like, ate it up. I was like, I never read anything like this. I didn't know you could do things like this mm -hmm. on stage. And I came back next week, had a chunk of the text uh, memorized and played around with it. And then she invited me to join the program. That's when I really started taking it up as a, as a serious profession. It was something that I knew that I could, that I felt that I had talent in. It was something that I enjoyed doing, that I didn't, that I enjoyed doing before that much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what roles did you play when you were in college? Did you have a specific one that stands out to you now? Yeah, I mean, my, uh, I did a lot. I mean, I ended up, um, I, uh, the first play I ever did, I played Medvedenko in The Seagull. Okay. Uh, you know, Anton Chekhov's um, classic. Um, that was, like, heightened text, like, late 1800s, early 1900s, and that was a... Uh, uh, a challenge for me, uh, but we also did Grapes of Wrath. We did some contemporary stuff. I played Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. which was uh, a really fun role. That really got me to like, like, stretch my creative side, and to really like take risk mm -hmm. as an actor, and to really just let my imagination run wild. Uh, run wild. So that was that's definitely one that stands out. And I had a I had a great time doing this uh, in college. And now you're based on the East Coast, so you started coming to New York to audition, right? Mm -hmm. you, you pretty much booked every New York show out there, right? You've pretty I, much been in an episode of all the New York stables. I, I you know, I, I'm really, really blessed. I, mean, I, I especially, I did Law and Order earlier this year, and like, especially that, when I yeah. got that, I was like, yeah. That's like, when, yeah, that's that's when like you a, know you've made it in New York when you're on. That's a New York, like, <laughs> actor rite of passage. Yes, so I was like, absolutely yeah. is. So that was, that was awesome. Um, I mean, yeah, why, I graduated, like, I always like to say, my journey was a little like funky at mm -hmm. first. Cause I, I've, I'm 28 now, and I graduated um, 2013, which is five years ago. And my first two years, I wasn't really getting anything. I was like, kind of like you know, I didn't really have group, uh, great representation at the time, and I was kind of like throwing darts at the wall mm -hmm. and seeing what would stick. And I ended up uh, about two years after graduating. Uh, one thing I did for myself that was really great, I ended up becoming an apprentice at the uh, professional training company, the Actors Theater of Louisville. Okay. And I worked in Humana Festival. I understood a lot of the shows there, and that gave me a base. I got to know people, uh, especially with the play that I did in Humana Festival. A lot of agents from New York, Chicago, mm -hmm. LA came come to that big theater festival, and my agent, my representation, saw me in the show, and then they signed me, and then I came back, and they, that's when I really started to get like the ball rolling and like nav like and being able to book you know, a lot of great shows in uh here in new york yeah um you did blue bloods right did i did blue bloods, bloods. i did uh, a guest star blue bloods uh, i had a guest star on blue bloods madam secretary law and order gotham sneaky pete um elementary mm -hmm. uh law and order um uh, i was a recurring guest on instinct mm -hmm. with alan cumming you really have nailed all of them yeah, I, you've literally have been on every New York show that tapes here. So yeah, so that, that, that I mean, I'm, I'm pretty. You need to go on Bull. I think they tape here. That's the yeah. only one you. Oh, Bull, yeah, Bull's the only one. Yeah, I got yeah, to. I got to shout out to Susky Manager. Give me on Bull. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, um, no, it's it's been great. Um, I've been really fortunate to work on this um, this show, New Amsterdam. It's a it's a great role. It's a great cast and crew. There's so much fun to be around. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, I also just finished, I, I was out in L.A. Uh, September? September, yeah, it was September uh, at L.A. Film Fest because um, a movie of mine just premiered. Uh, it's American Dreamer yeah. with uh, Jim Gaffigan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really great film, and he's fantastic, and he's a wonderful guy, Jim Gaffigan. And um, his, um, uh, it's his, his star turn in a leading dramatic role. It's something that uh, a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. Jim Gaffigan for, and he's excellent in this movie. And uh, good news is that we just got picked up by Sabin Films, so we're getting a North American distribution. So we'll be in theaters uh, in North America sometime early next year, I want to say January, February, on that time cool. of year. So we so look out for that. And uh, that was a great uh, part to play as well. Yeah. Now, you recur, uh, as you mentioned, you, you recur on... Uh, not manifest. You recur on New Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> They're very similar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they build them together. They do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, when you went in, did you know that you were going to be recurring throughout the season? Did you think that it was only for a couple episodes? What was the deal when you got signed? Well, when when I went in for the role, I remember because I had um, at the time I was I was booked to do a play out of town, mm -hmm. and I was and I was I was super ready to get ready uh, to, to go do that play. And uh, I went in, it was like two days before um, the, I was supposed to leave for this play. And it was uh, David Capilaretiadis' office. And Dave Cat who brought me in for those. Awesome guy. Um, such a, such a good, good dude. Um, he brought me in for this role, and I read through it once. And then, like, the next day I found out that I'd gotten it. And uh, when I first got the, the role, it said recurring guest star. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it was slated for about, like, three or four episodes and uh now that i know that i'm i'm already I'm, i have nine episodes already and nice. it's ongoing um because they very much you know write the like, tv i feel like is very much uh for these recurring parts anyway they, they write it as they go and uh, they find a way to you know to to incorporate you back into the story here and there throughout so uh yeah it's been great i mean um i mean i was originally slated to do three and they ended up on nine now and that's that's pretty awesome um it just it's one of those things where it's like you go in there and you know you just be thankful for the job that you have mm -hmm. already whether it's two episodes or one episode or ten or whatever you just go in put your head down and do a good job and uh, i think that uh, I've, I've made i've befriended a lot of people in that cast so far in the crew and they're just wonderful people i, I look forward to to going to work every day when i've been on that set and I miss them now. I'm not working on it at the moment. That makes it easy to yeah. go to work when you when you enjoy everybody. Your yeah. character is kind of painted as, um, at least appearance-wise, to be like a tough, macho guy. He's got the tattoos, yeah. which you don't have, do you? No, I don't. I don't how, have all those tattoos. How I long have... does it take you in makeup to get those all put on? Honestly, at this point, like 10 or 15 minutes now. Really? Because they all know where they need to go, and mm -hmm. they're like little stencils, and you put them on. Like, like kind of like the tattoo you get, like a cereal box. Yeah. Put on, add the water. Like that, and they're they're really quick to get it on and off. So um, Jamie Alexander on uh, Blind Spot's probably a little jealous of you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, she's probably gonna stay in that uh, that, that, that chair for like hours. I heard now. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's it's really quick. Um, yeah, I mean Casey is like, I mean, the way that he's been, that it's been, uh, he's been developing so far in the series. That he's a, uh, he's Doctor Bloom. Uh, Dr. Bloom, who's played by the wonderful Jan Montgomery, mm -hmm. um, she, uh, he is her like secondhand man, you know, her confidant. Uh, she has I'm not gonna give it away completely, but she has a, a a secret that only he really knows about throughout the first half of the season. Okay. And he is her confidant, like keeps it under wraps, looks out for her, um, you know, uh, very much has like this. This, this friendship with her, trying to keep her in place. And Casey's, you know, he's very much, uh, he's, uh, he was in the, in the army. Mm -hmm. He was um, uh, a medic, I believe, or a, a, a veteran in Afghanistan. Um, and uh, he, he is now in the, the nursing profession. And he's a very charming guy and makes everybody feel at home. Mm -hmm. uh, he has this great banter with Bloom. They're, they're great friends. They know exactly how to, like, you know, bust each other's yeah, chops yeah. in the right way 
Uh, it's, it's, it's a great it's a great role, and I'm really glad to be a part of it. Have you written a little bit of backstory, like maybe he has PTSD, or he seems very mild mannered, so yeah, yeah. that hasn't reared its head. But I, I, it hasn't reared its head yet. I think he's a guy who uh, he's definitely probably struggled with that before. Mm -hmm. I think, but him being a medic and him being a nurse has, in a way, combated that anxiety and that um, that pain of PTSD. I think he he has uh, because very much you know him, you know serving in Afghanistan is a high octane, mm -hmm. you know, sensory overload uh, world to be in. And, you know, what better way to combat that by doing something, by doing something, you know, when you're helping people. Right. And I think he's addicted to that adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. That's why he loves what he does. That's why he's so good at what he does, too. You know, anytime something, you know, goes back, uh, you know, uh, backfires, he's always there to clean it up. He, he's very much a, you know, a guy who has to think on the go because, you know, he's trained to, you know, think and uh, to just react, not think, but react on the moment's notice. That's why he's so good for this profession. Now that you've immersed yourself in television and you have that film coming out early next year, do you miss doing theater, or are you still trying to do stuff when time permits? I do. I, I really miss theater. Um, I just did a reading today of a new play, which is such a great play, and uh, I, I do miss having the opportunity to... Um, to, to work on stage is my background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, w w when I find time and then the t time permits, I, you know, I do a lot of developmental readings. Um, you know, I, I still audition for theater, but sometimes, you know, uh, TV and film kind of like, you know, has the upper hand, you know. And, and they eat up a lot of time when you're shooting. Exactly. So it's once you have, when you have a, you know, a TV or film, once you have it, you're committed to that. And like, yeah. it's just no really, it's not really easy way to work around it with other things. Talk a little bit about your character in, in your new film that's coming out in January. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the film's American Dreamer. Mm -hmm. uh, my character is a character named Gumby. He's this gross, um, sadistic dr drug dealer from Virginia. Uh, like, I, for whatever reason, I have a lot of tats with the character that I play. I'm all tatted <laughs> out in this, uh, in this movie as well. I have the tats on my chest and my arms, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I, um, I remember when I was talking, when I was first uh, in development for the film, when I had first gotten it, uh, the director, Derek Bort, who's another great guy uh, to work with, and he's a great filmmaker. Uh, we were talking on the phone about this character, like, you know, trying to pick each other's brain and see what, you know, if we had the same idea, what mm -hmm. we wanted the guy to go. And um, he, I told him, like, when I just read the script, like, I had this image of, like, an urban hyena, um, which is, like, this urban, like, fox-like, canine-like prowler in the night. And um, he was just like, yeah, I, that was great, that was great. So, like, and that's uh, kind of what I kind of developed from. I got, like, these gold grills for his teeth. Um, he is the partner of the main drug dealer, uh, whose name is Maz, played by Robbie Jones. And um, you find out, like, later on, I don't want to give it away, mm -hmm. but uh, you find out later on that he has been... Uh, Double crossing Maz in a number of areas with like money and like drugs and all this kind of stuff, and that ends up coming to a head at the end of the film. But he's a great character. I'm a he's a he's like a really sadistic hyena like. Uh, I, I I made him bark. He barks a lot in, in, in the in the in the film because I that's I, I equated him with being a hyena, and um, he's like a lot of my uh, influential like characters that I grabbed from. Were from guys like Post Malone, the rapper. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac Miller was another influence I had. Um, just a lot of these kind of like grungy type of tatted guys. Um, um, just wild and, and just very uh, rambunctious. He's a, he's a very like off the wall character. Very, you don't know what he's in. He's unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do next. So, hope you guys get out in there and see it. It's a, yeah, it's a good film. That's very cool. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the back half uh, on New Amsterdam. Mm -hmm back half of the season and yep. also in your new film Thanks, and I man. want to thank you so much for sitting down with me it's been a, it's been a real pleasure thanks Brian. thank, thank so you much,